Hello everyone and welcome to another Jet Sim Flight video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about where we actually source uh, our information that we get to build the various cockpit parts and um, the flight decks. So today I thought we'd do uh, an, something a little bit different than we normally do. Uh, I think we previously did a video uh, that was kind of like this. Uh, just sitting at the computer screen and looking at a few things uh, and that was uh, regarding how we build our panels so uh, today we're going to actually go over you know kind of where we get that information to even start building the panels so right away one of the first things you see here is I have Wikipedia up open and this is a great resource for finding a lot of information about the aircraft that you want to that you want to build or or something that you want to look into um, and sometimes you can get uh, some images and things like that so we can open that up and we see that we have a great image here of uh, the Embraer Legacy which is essentially just the 135 but slightly smaller I, I don't remember the exact differences but it's very very minute differences so um, but the majority of the cockpit is the same even from the Legacy to the 135 even up to the 145 LR um, so you can get a lot of information just from these pieces here uh, to help to build the sim to look as realistic as possible. So this is a great resource for um, you know looking at the image and saying, okay, well I have a speaker up here and there's a, a multi-directional light here, which is uh, the map light. Um, you know I got a compass that I got to worry about here. We got little grab, uh, grip handles here and one up here um, you know you can see how maybe the the pedals are actually shaped uh, as they're a little bit different than most of the other pedals that are out on the market for like the Boeing 737 or something like that uh, another thing especially from this picture that you can really tell some of the other pictures uh, for the ERJ 145 uh, you don't really see this far back from the seats so you you don't you don't see the fact that the Embraers don't actually have J rails. They actually have a, a straight rail and then a sliding mechanism that it slides across sideways. So it'll slides, you might be able to see this little bar right here. It actually slides along this bar left and right. And then along this track is uh, essentially the same as what the J rail is for um, the Boeing. Um, so that kind of gives you a really good idea of kind of some of the things that you can get just out of looking at this, you know, you can see there's a little ashtray over here and a cup holder, one map holder here, another one up here on this part. Um, we got the oxygen mask up here, the tiller on just the, the captain's side. And so you can get a good idea of a lot of positioning at the very least from something like this. Um, so this is a really great spot to kind of go through and uh, get the idea, get an idea of you know what the airplane looks like especially on the inside and maybe to learn some really important key differences between them um, and here you go you can see that the legacy 600 and 650 are essentially just the uh, the 135 so it's basically literally just the, the same same thing um, but you can get a lot of information from these and uh, uh, you can you know read through all the specifications so you can say okay, well, how do I know how big to make the cockpit, right? So we can go to something like this, which is like a line drawing. And we can see, all right, well, it's 2 meters, 28 centimeters wide, or 7 feet, 48 inches, which is, I don't know why they put 48 inches. That would actually be uh, 9 feet. Um, yeah, I don't know why that says 7 feet, 48 inches. Um, but anyway, the with this you can you can determine. Okay, well, I need my cockpit to be that big around. That's the size uh, diameter that the cockpit is going to be. Because as you can see from here, the cockpit area is the same size as the rest of the fuselage. So you have a really good, pretty good bet that you know the the airplane is going to be the same size as that. Um, so you know you can see right here it is. Um, uh, it doesn't, doesn't say it here, but this drawing is a really good example of that. But uh, you can also see some other things, service ceiling, range, things like that. Here you go, airliners.net. This is another another great place to go. 
Uh, you can get some more pictures. And here we go. Here's an actual ERJ-145. And um, you can see just some slight differences from, from picture to picture. One, one thing that I noticed uh, is that the specific FMC that's being used, the, 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 the whole system, is different. It varies. There's a there's some that have this universal, the short little universal like this one. There's some that have the long Honeywell. It varies from carrier to carrier, and you know what the operations are. And I'm sure by age as well. So, um, you know, some people have the RMUs here. Some of them have them mounted down here. It, it's it all varies. So you're gonna see some variance all over the place uh, for some of these some of these pieces. So. With that in mind, you know, how you kind of build some cockpits is completely up to you. It doesn't have to be exactly to what the, um, to every single picture or what everyone else is making because a lot of times there's a lot of variation, just, you know, one aircraft to the other. Another way that we get a lot of information is going and we look for things like flashcards and things like that that people can study. Um, to you know fly the actual aircraft so we can go and we can get actual ideas of how maybe some of these pieces actually work so um you know so what happens if one set of elevator or left or right becomes jammed you know you can it, it gives you information that you maybe wouldn't normally have and probably wouldn't be available on say the Embraer's website which is mostly just an informal uh sales and marketing um page using this right here actually learned that the the trim there's some uh the elevator and rudder trim actually get locked during uh when the autopilot is engaged so you actually can't even move the manual uh rudder and elevator trims so if we look right here at this panel this is actually the the elevator trim and this is the rudder trim uh these actually i guess these lock according to what the these um, flashcards actually say the, those are actually locked when the autopilot is engaged. So that's that's something that's important that if you wanted to add that feature so that, you know, when you hit the autopilot here, that engages an Arduino that, you know, um, push, puts a pin inside into, into each of these so that they can't move anymore. Um, so things like that, you know, that you just wouldn't normally have that kind of information unless you, you went through and did some of this research. Let me show you this other thing that I, I downloaded and I don't quite remember where I got it. Uh, this is a little PDF and it's a panel review and I think this was some, let's see, it might say here, William DeGrow or something like that. You could probably search for this online um, to, to find this actual PDF that I'm talking about here. And this is great because it, it tells you a lot of different things. One, it gives you all these great abbreviations, which if you're reading what's down below, you're going to need this because there's some things on here that even me as a an actual um, GA pilot, I don't know what half of these are. I actually have to look them up. Um, so, but they're important for when you get down to here and you see that, okay, well, here's the right main instrument and glare shield panels. So now... I'm looking at the panel and it's telling me something. So we got standard altimeter setting button is right here. Okay. And switch altimeter reference between inches and hectopascals. All right. So there's a, there's a button for each one of those things. So now I know that those two buttons control that. Um, now this, this sheet doesn't have everything, but it has a lot of information. And if you're trying to make the, the aircraft as realistic as possible, it's really nice to have really great information. And as we scroll down, we get to each of the different various parts of the entire system. And it tells us and explains to us kind of what all these things actually do. Um, let's see what else. I mean, there, there's just so much information in this one PDF by itself. It's, it's one of my biggest go-to pieces. Um, not only for just, you know, what, what panels need to be done and what pieces are on the... Um, on the aircraft itself, but you know, kind of their positioning, the basic look of the panel, the basic size, and those type things.
And then we get to the overhead panel and we start to really dive into how some of the systems operate, which this is a really important part that for us right now, for me right now, is, and that's because I'm getting ready to start doing all of the uh, systems work. And so this electrical panel is super critical in determining exactly how um, to set that up so that all my panels and stuff, all the backlighting and stuff, I don't want it to actually turn on right away when I power up all the power to the sim itself. I want it to, I want all those things to be controlled by whether there's power that's given to the sim through either the GPU or through the batteries or through the APU running. So essentially, I want to be able to build into the sim those same kind of functional logics. Um, so for me, this is a really great panel because I can I can look at it and I can say, okay, well, you know, in this in the off position, uh, the BC is kept open, disconnecting the battery from the electrical system. Okay, so I know that BC in this instance is uh, actually the battery connect uh, contactor. Uh, so they call everything a contactor, which is essentially a fancy name for a switch. For me, uh, the the part that I'm going to be using this for is to determine, you know, if I if I have the battery one turned on, what what items can I turn on in the cockpit? You know, is the uh, the captain's and first officer's PFD and uh, MFD both going to be turned on? Um, will the ECAST screen be available? What what kind of items are actually able to be turned on, and what what things should I give power to um, as a result of that? So that's one of the things that I'm going to be using this for, and I'm probably going to be using this to do some Ardu Arduino triggers as well, so that um, when these things power up, um, all, all of the pieces power up the way they're supposed to power up and, um, we'll, we'll, the, it'll make the, the cockpit feel more realistic and really give you that full immersion that you're trying to go for with something, uh, in a fixed based simulator. So those are, those are the, the major places that I go to get that kind of information. Um, there's another really great place and let me just pull that up really quick here this is one of the other places uh, that I got a lot of information when I first started building uh, my Embraer ERJ 145 and that's because this is a this is a project that was built a long time ago quite a while ago and uh, this is where I got so many dimensions and I you know I've, I had the whole reason I'm making this video is actually I've had uh, couple of people asking me on uh, Instagram and Twitter and things like that, asking me about, you know, where did I get the dimensions and where did I get all the information? And so I wanted to kind of share that with you guys so that you guys could see exactly where I get this stuff from. So this is one place I got almost all of the measurements uh, for the cockpit because, well, it's holding up a metric ruler or um, a metric tape to everything. On a real Embraer, we can determine that, okay, well, this panel the thrust rating panel starts from five centimeters and goes to roughly what looks to be about 20, 235 to 235. So, uh, so fifth, so we basically just subtract the 50 from that. And that would give us how big, how wide this panel right here is. Uh, and from that, we could pretty much determine how how tall to make it and all, all the other bits and pieces that we would need to to really, truly build this piece out. So this is a really, really awesome resource um, if you're going to build an Embraer ERJ. Um, and there are tons of sites out there that are just like this for pretty much every aircraft you can think of. Um, and that's because, you know, there are guys and gals just like all of you out there who are, you know, wanting to build these simulators for themselves. And uh, they've done a really good job of obtaining all that information. Um, I am a huge fan of the Norwegian 737 project. I watched that guy's every every one of that guy's videos uh, at least a couple of times, um, especially just to get ideas about what I was missing, how to do some of the work. 
uh, things like that. Because when I started this, I had zero idea of what was going on and how to do anything. So for me, I really wanted to, I really wanted to get a better understanding of how to build things and what to do to build them. So that's where, those are the places I went. So YouTube is your best friend. Um, you know, learning how to, um, do the electrical stuff or Arduino or uh, understanding how to use a CNC mill or a laser cutting machine. All of these things are like super important when you're wanting to build a sim because it's really going to make your life a lot easier. Um, because when I started this, I started out by trying to cut acrylic uh, using the old, you know, scoring a line in the acrylic and then breaking it over an edge and then drilling into it and a piece of acrylic and it basically splitting in half uh, because I was using, you know, cast acrylic instead of using, you know, something like what we use now, which is chem cast. So there are all these things that you can learn just by doing a lot, a lot of research will save you hours and hours and hours in the end. So um, that's where we get all of our information from. And uh, I just wanted to share one other little thing here. Let's see if I can pull it up really fast. All right, and basically this is kind of, you know, what what you end up with in the end. Um, you know, granted, our simulator is not anywhere close to being finished. Uh, a lot of it is done, but there's still some work to be done. As you can see, I'm missing a one of the top panels here for one of the um, MIP display screens. Uh, I don't have any buttons in any of the panels here on the front. Um, I have only some of the buttons in the overhead panel, uh, mostly because those are on back order. <laughs> um, you know, and I don't have any of the inside interior panels done yet. Uh, for the most part, I do have you know, the little side pieces for the captain's and first officer's side. Uh, and I have almost none, I have zero of the exterior done. Um, even though most of that's not really going to be visible to um, anybody who's using it. Um, and then the other part that is missing is I have plans to have uh, a back on here so that essentially once you're in the cockpit, it's going to feel like you're in the cockpit and um, a little bit more enclosed. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to put a door on there yet or just a little curtain um, between the two main panels on the back there. But, um, you know, everything that you can do to make it more immersive, the better for plans for the sim. Uh, one of them I already showed you in the last video, which is uh, the speakers, the subwoofers that are underneath the seats. I think that's going to give a more realistic feeling to this fixed based flight simulator. Another thing is that I'm actually going to implement like the same fan idea um, slightly um, so that the the captain and the first officer are going to feel the breeze on their face, which I'm hoping is going to give the illusion of forward m movement and forward momentum. Adding as many sensory things in as possible is going to make that, that experience way better. So that's my goal. And I hope that you guys have learned some things in this video. Uh, I know it's been kind of a long video, but I hope that you can take away a few things from this and uh, Hopefully it will make your sim experience better. And if you have any questions or you want to just reach out and chat, uh, we'd love to talk about the sim and how we build the process and uh, just ask some of our Instagram and Twitter followers. We, we've been having conversations with people for, for months, actually. So have, uh, have a good one. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe below and hit that like button. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.